right now. Why she's taking on the most powerful man in the world and the devastating price she may have to pay for it. For the first time, she's responding to the president's public denials, answering critics who say she's cashing in on scandal. And she's dropping an exclusive bombshell, revealing a sketch of the man she says threatened her life in front of her child. The hottest topics start right now with Whoopi, Sarah Haynes, Joy Behar, Sonny Hostin, and Megan McCain. Now, let's get things started. some congratulations we want to get out of the way. First of all, congratulations to Kendrick Lamar, honey, who became the first rap artist in history to win a Pulitzer Prize for music. This marks the first time that the award did not go to a jazz or classical artist. And so uh, the question is, are people finally realizing that there is a cultural impact mm -hmm. that rap has had? Yeah. Yes. And it mm -hmm. always has had it. Yeah. Has always had it. Mm -hmm. I mean, remember Public Enemy? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's the, the voice of a people. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I was just thrilled. Well, it's, it's sort of know. reminiscent of the 60s in a way because the music around that time was a cultural yeah. and very interesting mm -hmm. stuff. It wasn't just, you know, I love you, you love me. It wasn't yeah. that. Right. Yeah. Previous right. to that, it was yeah. a lot of like that. Dylan. So it's very important yeah. to acknowledge that kind of thing that impacts the society. It's terrific. Well, it's yeah. kind of amazing. Yeah. It's like when Shaft won the Academy Award. Mm -hmm. That was kind of the, fir the, the, the uh, <coughs> for music. Because people, you know, hadn't really dealt with what we called at one point street music. Yeah, that was a great song. Our, yeah. You yeah. know, who is the man? Yeah. <laughs> mm. Fellow man. <laughs> sure. Can you dig it? No. Um, or uh, the, the uh, second one was uh, when it's hard out here. Oh, it's hard out here for him. Oh, yeah. Hustle right. and flow. 360 Wonderful. Mafia. There you go. So there good. You go. <laughs> so, to, you know, to see the music become part of the culture to yes. or make the maybe to make the rest of the culture part of the music maybe ah. that's the way so it's a fabulous thing and also you know miss beyonce kick butt yeah. at coachella, coachella. <coughs> you know yeah. i mean so there's a lot of great stuff going on and ronan farrell and ronan farrell also mm. won wow. uh for all of his exposure uh, of of the Me Too and and really sort of being at the forefront and taking these women's stories and yes. putting them out there so we are all <laughs> and aware. And Maggie Haberman with Trump. Yes. I mean that woman is the hardest working yeah. woman in political yeah. media. Yeah. Yeah. Did she win? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, she did. Yes, yeah, she did. That's so it's great. really kind of wonderful. <laughs> so we go from that to this. <laughs> Sean Hannity has spent a lot of airtime ranting over the Mueller investigation and the office rate of you-know-who's attorney, Michael Cohen. Take a look. You the liberal mainstream media, they've gone totally off the rails over the FBI's highly questionable raid on Michael Cohen. Now, this is an unprecedented abuse of power. It needs to be countered and countered immediately. This is now officially an all-hands-on-deck effort to totally malign and, if possible, impeach the president of the United States. Wow. Well, he may also have another reason to be upset because it was revealed in court yesterday that Michael Cohen's secret client, who did not want his identity revealed, is Sean Hannity. <laughs> now, apparently, people were like, <gasps> when, they, when they said the name in the courtroom. Now, should he have maybe come clean about this from the giddy-up? Yeah. yeah, whenever you're personally connected to a story or a source, you're, that is the journalistic standard that you say that. But also with journalism aside, if I were having a conversation with even a friend and yes. I was talking, I would say, 
by the way, I know this person. It's just integrity, period. We do it period. on this show all the time. Lisa Bloom comes on. I say, this is my friend. You've mm -hmm. had friends come on, and you identify the person mm -hmm. as a friend. What I'm confused about is that Michael Cohen made it very clear that he didn't want this client's identity revealed because the client didn't want it revealed. He also says that he did legal work for the client. Now, Sean Hannity saying, um, Michael Cohen never represented me in any legal matter. I never retained his services. They never involved any matter between me, a third party, a third party group at all. My question's almost exclusively focused on real estate. Well, then the attorney-client privilege belongs to the client. Is Sean Hannity saying he is not Michael, a client? Wait, Michael Cohen is a real estate agent now? Uh, <laughs> his questions were focused on real estate. He wears many hats, this yeah, guy. So there is Maybe no, he can get me a two-bedroom on the but, West Side. But there is no privilege as Sean Hannity is saying he was never a client. If he wasn't the client, yeah, what, what's the problem so with the privilege? Why can't we hear you know. He also says he's not a journalist. He's a pundit, I guess, right? Yeah. Or an I activist. Know, opinion. Opinion every, journalist. Every couple himself. of weeks he shifts it up, I guess. But, like you know, Chinatown. the guy in the White House has tweeted in the past, the Washington Post should be forced to register as a lobbyist for Democrats. But given how cozy Fox News is with this guy in the White House now, mm. shouldn't they also be the ones who have to register Fox News? Because Sean Hannity oh. is like state-run television in a funny yeah. way. Uh -huh. yeah, right. It sucks because there's really good journalists at Fox. Brett Baer, Chris Wallace, yes. John Roberts. And yep. it just makes Jeff Smith, yes. Yeah. It makes them, it puts them in a terrible situation. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, there actually, there are great journalists on Fox. Mm -hmm. And if you watch occasionally, you'll see them. Mm -hmm. And that's why we should all be watching yeah. everything, mm -hmm. okay? So that we can get an idea idea of what's John, really out there John, instead John of Robinson. waiting for somebody mm -hmm. to tell us. Mm -hmm. We'll be right back with Stormy Daniels. Next, Stormy Daniels sits down with the ladies of The View. Why did she storm into Trump lawyer Michael Cohen's court hearing? Hey, Stormy! And what stunning claim is she making for the first time right here? Don't move. It is up to all of us to continue the conversation. This is a cultural revolution. That's my opening statement if I'm a prosecutor. Boom, case made. Tell us more, Joy. I'm sick of it. She's sick of it! So grab your phone and join the conversation. I'd love to see that. Boom! And don't miss The View on ABC. For years, Mr. Cohen has acted like he is above the law. He has considered himself and openly referred to himself as Mr. Trump's fixer. He has played by a different set of rules, or should we say no rules at all. He has never thought that the little man, or especially women, and even more women like me, mattered. That ends now. My attorney and I are committed to making sure that everyone finds out the truth and the facts of what happened, and I give my word that we will not rest until that happens. All right. <laughs> Stormy Daniels has been on a mission to be heard about the alleged affair with the guy in the White House. Please welcome Stormy Daniels and her lawyer, Michael Avenatti. <laughs> We need to remind everybody that Trump is suing you for $20 million. So every time you talk, allegedly it costs a million dollars. You're going to pay a million dollars. Well, they wanted to pay. They wanted to <laughs> that, That's the, the thing he's threatening. So how come you came here today? Because I'm tired of being threatened mm -hmm. and intimidating me and trying to say that you'll ruin my life and take my, you know, all my money and my house and whatever. It's, it, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm done. I'm done being bullied. And, Done. And do you think that you'll ever have to pay this twenty million, Michael? Never in a million years. Not no. if I have anything to do about it. <laughs> I'd have to get twenty million first. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, get the money uh, out of it. <laughs> Stormy, a lot has happened in this case since we last heard from you. Uh, Trump's lawyer, Michael Cohn, is now under criminal investigation and had his office, his home, and his hotel room raided by the FBI. You sat in on the court hearing yesterday. Why were you there? I just wanted to make my presence known and wanted to make sure that I w people knew that I was taking it serious. Um, I know that there was some flack because he didn't show up to court on Friday for mm -hmm. his, um, and I did, wasn't sure if they were going to discuss anything particularly relating to papers in my case, okay. and I just wanted to be prepared and get all the facts. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. 
It almost reminded me of when yeah. uh, when Trump brought um, uh, Clinton's women to, yeah. to sort of intimidate, you know. Right. But I mean, not that you were there for that, but it kind of set the, so, the, the scene up a little, like, don't screw around with us because we're watching you, right. right? Am I right? No, absolutely. I mean, I think, it was, I think it was very important that, that Stormy was there to lend her support for the efforts of the U.S. Attorney's Office and to send a message that this is not a publicity stunt. I mean, this is serious business. There's a lot at stake here. These documents that are at issue could prove to be critically important as it relates to the future of the presidency. Mm -hmm. Okay. Go ahead, It seems like a publicity stunt on some level. I mean, I, I think yesterday, because you didn't have anything to do with the case, it seemed a little like you were just trying to get attention, which I understand that you're being sued by our president, but it, it does seem like you're benefiting a lot. I mean, you've gone on your Make America Horny Again tour. I'm sure you're making a lot of money, no disrespect. No. I hadn't heard your name until all of this had happened, and now you are a literally live on The View giving a, an entire interview with us. So it has been beneficial well, for your I, career. I, I, I want to address the first part, and I'm going to let her address the second part. As it relates to us having nothing to do with the case, I mean, that's just not accurate. On Friday, Judge Wood, who I know, granted me access to that case, stated that she would hear from me as to any issue that I wanted to speak about, recognizing that we did have standing in connection with that case because some of these documents that were seized relate to her. And in fact, the warrants stemmed in significant part from what happened to my client. So we had every right to be there and Judge Wood, the sitting federal judge, would not have granted me access to address the court if we had no business being there. But I'm gonna let Stormy mm. speak to this issue of making money from the tour, et cetera. Go ahead. Yeah. Can I just say, first of all, I did not name the tour. <laughs> that <laughs> You won't hear me say it. I haven't promoted that name. I think it's awful. Um, I, I know, you think the name's awful? Yeah, I, I don't like to use, I think it's cheesy and a play on someone else's idea and I try not to do that. Mm -hmm. um, a strip club owner in uh, the Carolinas came up with it and everyone else has latched onto it. Um, as far as the tour, I've yes, I've gotten more bookings than usual, but I'm doing the job that I've been doing for the last almost 20 years. Um, yes, there's a lot of publicity, but I didn't do it for that because this isn't what I want to be known for. Um, as a matter of fact, I hid for quite a while, and it's it's overwhelming and intimidating and downright scary a lot of times. Um, I've had to hire bodyguards, so yeah, I'm making more money, but it's I'm spending so much more. Like my my daughter, we have to hire a tutor now. And I have like bodyguards, and you don't even want to know their food bill because I have to feed them three times a day, and they are big. And <laughs> and I have to take like special cars and um, and uh, you know all these court costs and things you like never that. Should apologize and, for making a living. You're a working. Well, no, and I'm not. Money. I'm not. Like I'm not. But uh, but Megan Megan has a very very good question, and if and if I were her or anybody else, that's what I would be saying um, because a lot of people don't. A lot of people have the misconception that, like, I was trying to get out of the adult business or, or that this is what I want to do instead. And to be completely honest with you, it's not. Like, I worked really hard for the last decade in the adult business, which I have no qualms about. I'm not ashamed of so to be known as a question, if you don't mind. Sure. I, you're not the first adult star I've ever interviewed. I have respect for any woman who yeah. does well in any industry. It's whatever. I think my issue is if you don't like the Make America Horny Again banner, uh, can you ask them to remove it? I have okay. so many times. Mm -hmm. and, and I said, you guys might get sued for this because that club owner trademarked it. And I won't, repo like, if you look at the flyers and stuff I repost, like, I, like, crop it out or whatever. I try not to use it, but I have no control over what they might put on their own websites and things like that. Um, but yes, I am dancing more. Yes, I'm making more money, but I'm spending more money. And I think I said somewhere else, like, show me somebody who wouldn't be like, oh, we want you to do the same job you've always been doing and we're going to pay you more. Like, who would ever say no to that? Mm -hmm. um, but that's not why I did it. And to go back to what I was saying before, I worked very, very hard the last 10 years or so to really be known as a female director in the, in the adult business. I was in the process of, uh, like, moving on to some mainstream things. I've directed some music videos. I had a, a passion project of mine in the works for the last several years to direct a horror movie. And those people that were my investors have ghosted me. Yeah. Like, they've completely abandoned me. Will Trump be in the movie? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Well played. <laughs> well played. Speaking of that, <laughs> <laughs> earlier this month, uh, he broke his silence, denied knowing anything about hush money, where it came from. Let's take a look. <laughs> 
So, did this surprise you at all? Let me just say, I work in the adult business, and I'm a better actress than he is. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know what, what we, it, 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 I'll tell you, it shocked me, because, you know, it's one thing to be undisciplined in life, it's another thing to be undisciplined in litigation. Mm -hmm. And when you have a, and you know this, I, I mean, when you, when you have a client that is undisciplined like that and just spouts off, that's a very dangerous thing right. when, he's, when he's involved in a lawsuit. And what's ironic to me about this is, that's on a Thursday, and then on Monday, the attorney that he told the American people they could ask the questions to, that attorney's offices and home is raided by the FBI. That's yeah. a pretty shocking chain of events in a very short period of time. Right. Well, Storby, we want to talk about the physical threat you say was made against you in 2011. Can you remind everyone uh, what, you, what you claim happened that day? Sure, yeah. Um, I was recovering from having my daughter um, and taking mommy and me workout classes and I had pulled into the parking lot and you know, I was running late. My daughter was you know, still very young. She was in the rear facing car seat and all that. And I actually did notice a guy walking when I was parking. And he stood out to me because it was a women's center. They had like prenatal yoga and like Lamaze classes and things like that. And I noticed him because he was sort of well dressed and nothing about him alarmed me. I really thought he was someone's husband that was like not wanting to be in whatever his wife was doing. Mm -hmm. And as I walked around the car and began getting her out and she dropped her toy, I just remember it so clearly. You know, I stuck the toy in my mouth and I'm, I'm getting her and he walked up behind me and I saw his reflection and I turned around and I thought for sure he was gonna say, hey, do you know where the such and such class is or what building is, whatever. And he had his hands in his pocket and he looked at my daughter and I just remember him saying like, oh, it's a beautiful little girl. It'd be ashamed if something happened to her mom. Forget about this story leave Mr. Trump alone. And it was like, it, it didn't even register to me at first. And then he turned and walked away. And I'll, like I said, his face is burned in my memory. And I wasn't even that scared at that moment because it just was so shocking. I was like, wait, that didn't go as I thought it was going to. And I got her out and I hurried inside. And when I got in the elevator to go up to the floor, I just remember like, I, I like leaned against the wall because I couldn't feel my feet or my face. Because then I think it really sunk in what he had said and, and I got to the class and I felt dizzy and I went to the restroom and one of the instructors actually came and asked me if I was okay and I remember I lied and said my baby had had a, a, a blowout in her diaper so like and I was really rattled and I, I it just never left me but the thing that I remember so clearly about him is that nothing was alarming about the way he looked at first mm -hmm. all right well coming up You've been working on a sketch of the man who allegedly walked up on you. We, uh, we'll see that when we come back. We'll be right back. What's the one daytime show unafraid to tell it like it is? What's the name of the show again? The View. Oh, that's right. Welcome to The View, everybody. We bring the passion. If people don't understand your dream, the dream's not for them, it's for you. Yeah. We bring the OMG. Damn. <laughs> you were in danger, girl. <laughs> no, you were in danger, girl. We talk it all and keep it real. That's what The View does. That's right. Only. If he doesn't watch the 60 Minutes, if he's watching tonight, what would you say to him? He knows I'm telling the truth. So we're back with Stormy Daniels, y'all, and her lawyer, Michael Abbott. <laughs> Stormy, you recently sat down with a forensic artist, a very well-known one, mm -hmm. um, who created a sketch of the alleged suspect based on your memory from that day, and now you're ready to reveal that sketch for the first time. Can we take a look at that sure. with you? No. There you go. And to your recollection, is, is, is that the person that threatened you? Absolutely. Looks exactly like that person? Mm -hmm. Stormy, why did you feel like you couldn't go to the police originally when you were threatened? <laughs> well, two, two things. First of all, I was scared. It was expressly what he told me not to do. And I went home and like regrouped. It was, I was going to, because I always feel like you should stand up for yourself and you should report it. 
But the problem with that in this particular case, instance, would I would have gone to the police and would have gone, okay, a man approached me. This is what he said to me. He told me, leave, you know, leave Mr. Trump alone. And their very next question, the detective would have asked me, why would somebody tell you to leave Mr. Trump alone? Mm. And I would have had to answer that question, which was not public at the time. And I would have had to tell the an entire police department. And police reports are public record. I know that for a fact. I had sex with Donald Trump. And then the whole world would have known, and I was in the process of trying to quiet that or figure out what, what to do. And, and honestly, I was just afraid, and I didn't want everyone to know. I didn't want my family to find out that way. It, I didn't want my life turned upside down. When you were speaking to news organizations, though, and Michael, maybe you can talk to this too, including ABC, you never brought up the threat. So why now? Because I knew I would be asked the question that you were asked. You just asked me, like, why didn't you say anything? And I did tell quite a few people, actually, um, from back then. And, and Who did you tell? I told uh, family members and two friends and people that I worked with. And I, I mean, it's obvious she just didn't sit down with this sketch artist and, I mean, fabricate this. I mean, this is a very detailed mm -hmm. sketch, oh, yeah. and it was created by a woman by the name of Lois Gibson. She has the world record for the most identification. She yeah. works with the FBI She's and well known, law enforcement all around the country, and, and she found uh, she found Stormy to be very credible and is highly yeah. confident in the sketch, and we hope that it's going to result I'm in... I'm in awe of your memory, and this was seven... How many years ago? It was seven years and ago. And you remembered to that detail. I mean, he looks like an actor, sort of. I, that's why he stood out to yeah. me, is because I thought, honestly, that he was, you know, sort of handsome. And when, yeah. I, when I saw but him when I was parking, I was like, oh, that's somebody's husband. He's you don't expect my, to somebody threaten but, you to but be I wanna, handsome. I want to finish answering my question to Megan. Mm -hmm. Honestly, one of the main reasons I didn't say anything is because I didn't tell my husband hmm. well, at the time. Okay. I didn't want okay. him to oh. be upset with me. And then I felt like, honestly, at so much time had passed, I was embarrassed to say something and have him say. But your husband knew what? about the incident with you and Trump in uh, at that point in, in California. California. No, he did that not. Point at that point in time, oh, he didn't said. know. So and so to go home and be like, I had this guy attack me. Oh, and by the way, he did this because of this. And right. I didn't want him to think I was a bad mom or that I'd put our daughter in danger. I, I just didn't know. Mm -hmm. Michael, have you handed this sketch over to the authorities? Yeah, we're not in a position to really get into who we've shared it with mm -hmm. or what the contacts have been, et cetera. But what we will say is this, is that we're offering a $100,000 reward for information leading to the identification of this man. Um, and if people go to... They can send us the information. <laughs> If you send us information that you have, and if you positively identify him, we're going to pay you $100,000 because we want to get to the bottom of who this is, and we think we know who sent him. You do. But we want to confirm it. Well, I just need to make a legal yeah. note real quickly. The sketch is not evidence that underlying story is true. I just need to put that out there. All that legal ease. Yeah. Always I thought there. you'd appreciate yeah. it. Until yeah. 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 the guy shows up and looks exactly like that, then you got something. Do you yeah. think that description, because it's seven years old, will it hold up in a court of law if this person is able to be identified? We, we believe it will. And in fact, Lois Gibson has worked with cases that have been much longer than seven years of age and, and has been very uh, successful in getting identifications and having things like that hold up in a court of law. So we're confident that this is going to be another instance. And, yeah. and we're hopeful that someone, we know that someone knows something. This yeah. man bragged to someone or told somebody about it, and we're going to get to the bottom of this. Right. So. We will be right back with more with Stormy Daniels and her attorney Michael Amalotti. View strong. It means standing up for what you believe. We definitely have things to stand up against in this country right now. It means women standing up together. There's women who are standing up and saying, no, me too, and I'm going to watch out for my sisters on set. It sets an example for any other abuser that their time is up. We're not done yet. Oh, you know. It means telling it like it is. Sorry to puncture your heroes, but sometimes these heroes need to be better. You are so brave. This is about how to be brave in the face of adversity. You strong. We will back you up. We will stand with you. And we're only getting stronger. We're the view. Hey, we're back with Stormy Daniels and her lawyer, Michael Avenatti. I keep changing the pronunciation, please forgive me. I just get so... I, I've been called worse. Okay, <laughs> good, good. 
Now, uh, Stormy, your interview with Anderson Cooper was one on 60 Minutes, mm -hmm. was one of the most watched interviews in a long time. Um, but there was a rumor going around that you were high mm -hmm. uh, during your 60 Minutes interview. People were saying that your pupils were dilated. They're probably dilated now, <laughs> how my eyes are. Yeah, they are, actually. Um, what, what do you say about that? I say that it's ridiculous. That there's no way I could have given an almost three-hour interview yeah. and sat that still and made sense and been articulate yes. if I was high or without leaving once to go to the bathroom and yeah. Well, I mean, and it's just ridiculous. Yeah, it's I'm, completely false. Anyone who knows me knows that I don't do that. Mm -hmm. And here's the other thing: I would have never allowed a client to give right. an interview mm -hmm. high. Yeah. And even if you believe that I would, the journalist is 60 Minutes, and Anderson Cooper Anderson would not Cooper. would not right. sit down for an interview yeah. of this magnitude with someone that they thought was high. Right. Yeah. I mean, this suggestion is yeah. absurd. Yeah. 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 I have to ask you something that was it's been preying on my mind because after the interview, Maureen Dowd in the New York Times, she wrote this whole opinion piece about how women, because of something you said in the interview, that women are having sex with men they're not even attracted to. And you, you said something like that, you know, that you weren't, you were 60, you were 27. And it's like, I, I, I'm interested in your thoughts on the subject. You know, I don't understand why anyone would have sex with someone, they, unless you're married to them, and then you <laughs> I can, But I mean, wow. to have sex with someone you're not attracted to when you don't have to. Lord. Yeah. Why? I think there's a lot of different reasons, and I'm not going to presume to know what any woman is thinking in that moment, of course. Mm -hmm. But you could say, you know, it's... I know women who've slept with men out of pity or because it, they didn't know how to say no mm -hmm. or they felt like they had put themselves in this position where it'd be more difficult or more troublesome for them long term yeah. to say no, which is, you know, sort of where I was at that, you know, that they could have some sort of re repercussions may, socially or financially or with their jobs if they say no. Um, and some people just, you know, like what, notches in their belt. I mean, there's so many different reasons. Hold on a second. Be honest, though, with me. Did you do it? Was there something in your head that said, I'm, I'm going to be on Celebrity Apprentice if I do this? Was that there at all? In that very moment, no. That thought wasn't until, like, later I was like, oh, well, maybe something good can come out of it. But, and, but in that very moment, I sort of was like, oh. And then I blanked. I see. Did yeah. you pity him? Yeah. No. No, um, I, I, you know, he said that um, Karen McDougal said that Trump offered her money after mm -hmm. they had sex. Did he offer you money? No, absolutely not. Because I even thought like, oh, my gosh, I wonder if he's a going to. Mm -hmm. And I kind of braced myself, but he didn't. Mm -hmm. There was no that's the other thing I want to like make very clear. There was it was not prostitution because there was absolutely no solicitation no agreement and no money exchange. Stormy, do you think it's fair that some people are questioning your credibility in this situation because you are a porn star? Absolutely not. I think that what I do for a living should not matter. The, what I do for a job doesn't impact my ability to know right from wrong or to tell the truth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that by the way a hundred percent this question is one that I really wanted to ask you because I'm curious you are clearly a family woman you're talking about your daughter and your husband have you thought about the implications of all of this on the Trump family I've thought about everything uh, every different way a million times more than I probably should think about things I lay I since all this happened I'm averaging about two hours a night sleeping so I've literally thought of everything mm -hmm. and you know, that's between him and his family, you know. You think that it's just all between, it, yeah. it's got to just kill them. I, I, you know, I come from a political family and it would, it, this would, I, I would probably have to be on medication. I mean, I just can't imagine. And I understand there's, he's completely in the wrong as well, but do you have any Not more thoughts on that? Not just with her either. No, it's no, I mean. Yeah. The list is long. So I just have, I, you know. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so I, people coming up to you, uh, saying stuff, as, as we all know, this happens to us in a, on a daily basis, or maybe it doesn't happen to me a lot. Um, <laughs> tell people what it's been like for you and your family to be out. Yeah. I guess if I had to choose one word, I would say intense. Mm. And it's, it's, it's both sides. Um, I've had women come up to me and just profusely thank me and, and 
put me on this pedestal and say like, oh my gosh, you're, you know, thank you for inspiring me and, and you're, you know, and I, I'm like, well, we need to reevaluate your life choices if, you know, like if you're that excited to meet me. But, um, and then on the other side of that, I have people just randomly come up to me. You asked about my family. Mm -hmm. My husband had a terrible incident um, a week or two ago in a restaurant with our young daughter. Mm -hmm. And people will just come up and say mm -hmm. the most horrible things in front of a child. And, oh, we don't believe you, you're worthless, you're, you know, you're a whore, you, you deserve to die, your child should be oh. euthanized. Oh That's my You God. should see the messages that I get. Oh, yeah. You deserve your kid to be taken away, you deserve her to be put to sleep because she's better off than with you. And then, like, literally the very next sentence will be, like, you're a national treasure. And I was just like, wait, wait, what? Like, wow. it's just, it, so it's intense. If, yeah. we, if we read emails, if we, if we just randomly picked 100 emails a day that her and I get, and mm -hmm. we read them, first of all, we, couldn't, we could not read them on network television. They're so bad. They're so threatening and over the top. I mean, yeah. there's a lot of crazy people out there, yeah. and it is very, they very... They write us, too. <laughs> yeah. we, right. we hear from a lot of people. <laughs> <very, laughs> I, 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 I have a few, too. Yeah. <laughs> we'll be right back with more from Stormy Daniels and her attorney, Michael Avenatti. <laughs> Why does Stormy's lawyer say President Trump's attorney, Michael Cohen, is about to turn on him? Find out next. <laughs> Violent criminals ordered to wear ankle bracelets out of jail and committing murder. He could take it apart in less than a minute. Who was supposed to monitor them and keep us safe? The next thing that came out of their mouth was, it looks like someone's going to die tonight. A stunning 2020 investigation tonight on ABC. We're back with Stormy Daniels and her lawyer, Michael Avenatti. Michael, we've got some questions in this case that only I think you can answer, so let's jump in. Um, yesterday you were in the courtroom when Sean Hannity's name was revealed as Michael Cohen's uh, secret third client, and you said it went off kind of like a, like a, a bomb or a stink bomb or something. <laughs> what, what, uh, what happened? Well, Whoopi, there was about 20 minutes of, of foreplay leading up to that moment. Right. Right. Uh, in, words, the, in, the, in the, in the, in the courtroom, there was, a, there was a lot of back and forth. Right. Uh, Michael Cohen's counsel was doing their very best to convince the judge not to force them to disclose the name. Right. They offered to disclose the name privately to Judge Wood. Right. Uh, there was a lot of debate back and forth. This went on for some time. And finally, um, she looked at his counsel and said, I'm going to order you to disclose the name publicly. And his lawyer said, well, do you want me to do that on a piece of paper or do you want me to state it orally? <laughs> and I was sitting there and I thought to myself as an experienced trial lawyer, well, what he should do is write it on a piece of paper and hand it to the judge right. because yes. what you're hoping is, it's kind of like a Hail Mary, yes. that the judge will look at it and, and say, well, we're going to hold off. Yes. Or let me yes. think about this, right? right? Well, lo and behold, <laughs> he doesn't do that. Oh, and he says, well, then I'm just going to announce it orally. The client's name is Sean Hannity, and all the air was sucked out of the room. <laughs> you, could not, you could not breathe in the yeah. room. There was gasp, and after about 20 seconds, yeah. Uh, ten journalists stood up because you, you don't have your cell phone. You don't have your cell phone, and right. so nobody can tweet anything right. or send a text message. Yeah. They rushed out of the courtroom, and all I could do as I was sitting there was think was think to myself, I wonder what Sean Hannity is doing right now because his world just came crashing down to a significant wow. degree. And Michael Cohen, yeah. um, uh, you know, his lawyers are saying. Uh, that this happened. Now, they're admitting that, that he's the client, and Sean Hannity is saying, oh, it's nothing, it was just a little... Then why were they so reluctant to reveal it if it's nothing? Well, Joy, I think the reason why, I, I happen to agree with you, I think the reason why they were reluctant to reveal it is because, remember the context, it's about the documents that were seized by the FBI. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Clearly, there are documents that have Sean Hannity's name on them in some capacity, because otherwise there'd be no reason to bring this exactly. up. There's no reason to, right. to attempt to hide the name. And look, I don't know what the documents say or don't say it. We're going we're gonna to find out. Do you think that Michael Cohen will ultimately turn on Trump, or is he attached at the hip to this guy? No, I think there's no question in my mind that Michael Cohen, A, is going to be indicted uh, within the next three months, likely, and B, he's going to roll on the president to the you extent think that... so? Really? No question in my mind. No question. Based on what? I'll tell you. Yeah. Based, based, based 
based on my 18 years of experience, based on my experience in white collar cases and how they usually play out, and based on the fact that Michael Cohen has a family, he has kids, I understand mm -hmm. that he's a fairly devoted father, and he's not gonna look at his wife and say, no, I'm gonna go take a bullet for this president and go serve decades or, or 10 years or at five years, mm -hmm. at yeah. least 10 mm -hmm. in a federal penitentiary. Yeah. Why would he do that? I mean, this is a man that this is, Mr. Trump left him behind when he went to Washington. Yeah. He hasn't done him any favors. Yeah. Well, Michael, we're finding out about other NDAs Michael Cohen was involved in arranging. Um, you say this could get into the double digits. How are you so sure? Well, I, I, look, we know of a number of NDAs. I don't want to get into the details of how we know that, but we know that, that she was not alone. We know of McDougal, we know of other women that have contacted my office. I'm highly confident that it, it's gonna be a pretty significant number. I mean, the problem for the president is he picked the wrong fixer and he entrusted a lot of his personal secrets to a guy that frankly was not smart enough and was not tough enough. And it's just that simple. Megan and I have been talking about this. Sonny and I just wanna know what the end game What's is. What's the end game? For you two, what, I mean, what, how does this end? Do you want yeah. President Trump to publicly apologize? Do you want him impeached? I, What's the end game? I, I think we've been clear all along for weeks. We want the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. And we're going to let all of these people decide when they have all the facts and all the documents and they hear from all sides who's telling the truth and who's lying to them, period. All right. That, wow. for me, that's good. For me, it, it, it is that, but it is also... I mean, on a selfish note, it is my chance to defend myself mm. and to make people realize right. how and why this happened so I can tell my side. That's my selfish reason. Right. I'm not going to lie about that I part. Gotta, and I have to stop you we're out of time. because but, we're out of oh. time. Mm. Uh, but thanks to Stormy Daniels and her attorney, Michael Avenatti, we'll be, Avenatti, sorry, we'll be <laughs> right back. <laughs> We wanted to give Stormy a chance to finish her what she was saying. Okay, okay. Megan asked me what my end game was, and before we had to cut, I just wanted to say if I can inspire or convince a woman who feels that she has been intimidated or bullied or is too afraid to come forward to an accuser and a, an attacker, then I'm happy. That you absolutely have the right and you should stand up for yourself and you should not be afraid or bullied. That's right. And on that note, have a great day. Take a little time to enjoy the view.